Hey everybody, it's Eric Balance coming to you with the Resilient Minds Podcast, where I feature beautiful entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and experts in their field, where they help us discover their X factor, their experience of life, only to discover how they were able to accomplish and find out their why factor, their big why, their purpose in life. So join me as we get to discover the beauty of our minds and how can we really continue to go after the biggest and most wildest dreams while we continue to pursue and manifest our greatest intelligence that comes from the heart. See you on the show. Welcome everybody to the Resilient Minds podcast. I'm excited today. Uh, I'm meeting today a friend that I met in Birmingham uh, at UBW with Tony. Uh, his name is Lyndon Longhorn. Welcome to the show, my brother. How are you? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, grateful. Grateful to be here. Grateful to, to see you again. Uh, for those of, the, the, of you that don't know Lyndon yet uh, or haven't heard of him, Lyndon is a resilient quadruple amputee who overcame meningitis at just eight and a half months old. He's an Olympic torchbearer and dedicated young ambassador for meningitis now. At the age of 27, with a sports management degree underneath his belt, he's really pursuing a lot um, and becoming a really Paralympic swimmer. Driven by his passion, his, and this man has passion, uh, you know, an unwavering positivity to really step into you know, something greater than himself. Lyndon's journey has been an inspiration. Um, you know, not only is he focusing on really implementing this next step in terms of Olympics or Paralympics, but really cultivating his aspirations in acting and modeling and really empowering, you know, the environment. So welcome to the show, bro. It's, it's really connected. It's really nice to meet you again. Uh, I know when we spent time in front of Tony there, at the event, uh, you know, I got to meet you through a friend, uh, yeah. our dear friend Chris. So it's it's beautiful to connect once again, and uh, let's, uh, let's have some fun, bro. Yeah, absolutely, it's great. I mean, I know we spoke briefly at UPW, and that's where Chris had introduced me to you. And yeah, it's just been been a crazy few months, but it's just amazing. Like you don't realize until. You meet people like yourself, Chris, and other people at UPW, how how driven mm. everyone is. It's nice to be in that environment around surrounding yourself with the people that thrive upon success and want success for not only for them, but for other people as well. So it's amazing. I love it, man. And so tell us about your journey because you know, on this, on this, on this show, I always talk about our experiences, right? I always like to understand people's experiences and what drives them, like what really drives them to follow their purpose, their why, you know, and, and I know that, you know, you've had, you know, some challenges we've all have, but the, the thing is, is I always believe there's some defining moments that really help us cultivate this. And, you know, we'll get into UPW, but first I want to know more about you. And I want to know, you know, like what's, what's, What's driving Lyndon? You know, what's 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 giving him that 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 desire, that hunger? I think for me, it all started from a young age. Obviously, having meningitis at eight and a half months old, and then you're losing both your legs, your right arm, and fingertips on your left hand. And my mum was only eighteen, so to see the fighting spirit, what she had to get me through that tough time it's kind of driven upon me to to take that thrive and push it further. So she's always said to me, you've got to have that can-do attitude and the positive mindset to push you forward. Otherwise, if you sit back, it's it's not going to work. And that's what I teach a lot of people now, that you have to sit back on tasks. You have to go out there and put yourself there in that position to say, this is what I can offer you. So for me, my disability has helped me and I get it all the time where people say, would you change anything? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't because I love I love what I do. And I can't describe life with having limbs to then not having limbs. It's it's completely different because I've gone and grown up with it throughout life. Going to mainstream school, speaking to people and being welcomed and being included. It's all about that inclusivity and making sure that everyone feels like they are part of that group it would have been quite easy for schools to turn around and say no like we can't um accommodate what he what he needs and stuff like that but 
the fact that everyone just welcomed you with the open arms was absolutely incredible. And then obviously my swimming journey. So my swimming journey that started back in 2009. So it was after the Beijing Olympics started. That was my inspiration when Michael Phelps won eight gold medals and eight world records. I was like, for someone to say that, but to actually do it is two completely different things. And it would have been easy to go out there and say, okay, yeah, I, I'll i say it to the press or whoever. But the fact that he did it was like, wow. Like, if he can do it, why can't I do it? Why can't other athletes do it? So that's why I set my goal of saying, right, well, I want to go to London for the 2012 Olympic Games. And then it kind of just hit us in the spot where I was like, what sport do I want to do? And I knew from a young age, my grandparents got me in the water, taught me to swim. And they were the ones that pushed me into it. But I didn't have any interest in thought thinking that I would take the sport further. And that's where I was like, right, let's try swimming. And it just progressed like there's no tomorrow. And it it just went from zero to 100 so quick that young kids were starting to get inspired, like from seeing me in the water. And they were even saying like, wow, it's just incredible to see someone who with a disability show that it's about your ability to push that forward and drive that success and show that you you can do anything once you put your mind to it. I mean, yeah, there's been many ups and downs along the way, like failures, success, but I've always been that type of person. You, you knock me down, but I'll get up. I'll get up 10 times harder. So it's it has took me a while to train my mindset to get to that point. But if it wasn't for the years of sport that I've had in us for 12 years that I've been around it, I wouldn't be the individual that I am today. And it it's amazing to be given opportunities. And I'll tell everyone to this day, if you're given an opportunity to do something, take it because you don't want to look back in the next five to 10 years and say, why didn't I take that opportunity when it, it could have changed my life? So that's why now I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> that means doing a bit of a... Just figuring it out as you go. And that's the thing is like, I think that most people, they try to figure out the, the how instead of like figuring it out while they're doing it. And I think this is the thing is like most people, they get so stuck in their perspective of what it needs to be, not allowing their imagination to run free, to allow the solutions to show up. Yes, correct. Because we end up attracting them. Mm -hmm. Especially when we're doing our best. That is one thing. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> right? Isn't it magic? It's like they end up just showing up out of the blue. Like, where did you come from? And you're like, I was, I just manifested you. Yeah. You could be one minute there like, meh. And the next minute it's like, hold on. I've never seen you before. And you're like, you have now. <laughs> well, here I am to help you all of a sudden, you know, like. <laughs> It's so fascinating how this works and it becomes this resonant energy where people are like, well, yeah, like, oh, you're looking for that? Yeah, like, how can I support you? And it's interesting that the more that we can attune to this energy, that the more it starts to actually like, like become this huge wave of possibility. Yeah. So how, like, at what age did you start to recognize this curiosity that allowed you to regularly find solutions everywhere you went I think it was the help of having my parents behind us to say no you can do it to drive you forward if it wasn't for them I probably would have given up at the first hurdle with their motivation to push me and the desire and the discipline to stick at it and make me want to do it it was there in my heart to say okay well let's do it yeah don't get me wrong the first few years of my swimming I was just like oh can I be bothered with this like it's so it's so demanding you don't realize until you actually drive yourself into something that requires a lot of discipline and motivation and desire that you don't know what you're getting yourself in for and then after London I think that was the biggest thing for me when I failed to get to make the team for London but then to be a torchbearer that year, that was my motivation to say, yes, you might have failed, but the, you've also gained a reward out of it. And I was like, OK, maybe this is a sign to keep going. And I did. And that's why I decided, OK, 
yeah, you've knocked me down and I've failed after four years. That doesn't matter. I'll go another four years. But it it's teaching yourself that it doesn't matter how much you fail, use that failure as a guidance to guide you along that path to say, okay, what would you change next time? Or what would you do here? Because if you keep mm-hmm. getting success, 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 as soon as you hit that first point of failure, you can turn around and go, mm, well, do okay. I- I found this on the web for as soon as you hit a first point of failure, you can turn round and... My series going off like wild, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those... And this is what I think is like, just the, and maybe that's the cue, is like the fact that you can see the lessons in the failure is really beautiful because, you know, most people when they say, oh, failure, failure, they look at it as a negative thing. Um, but failure isn't actually failure. Failure is just an opportunity to see how not to do something. It's just a, it's a, it's a way to change your approach. It's a way to identify and create a new opportunity. And and I, I really believe that because you know I've I've myself been through some 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 of those experiences and and it's been beautiful to to go through because it gives you tenacity, resilience, possibility infinite intelligence because you tap into something so much more greater than yourself and so as a result it gives you grace yeah i think the biggest thing what it can teach you as well is that it's it i always use it as an acronym as a first attempt in learning Mm -hmm. and the more the more you use that if you have success after success you turn around to yourself and you say, okay, well, now I've failed. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to do it anymore. But it's like, well, no, that's teaching you that you need to go a different way about it. But it's weird how your mindset can actually recognize that in a lot of people and say, okay, I've done something wrong, but what do I change the next time to make that a success? So you learn from it and you improve from that. So, yeah. Do you think that this is something that most people uh, are aware of, that they can find a new solution? Or do you think that when they fail, they um, kind of wallow and go back into their uh, kind of corner and, you know, allow that failure or that fear to overcome them? What, what, what's your thoughts on this? I think personally, it can be a bit of both ways. There's a lot of people out there who don't like failure and are happy to sit there once they fail and say, well, I've failed in life and start using it as a negative. And once you use it as a negative, use a negative against a a negative again, it can turn into a snowball effect. For me, I've seen a lot of people, especially in sport and outside of sport, who are running businesses or going down an entrepreneurial route, whichever way they're going, they can see it as that part of a motivational thing to push them to that next level. So they might thrive upon failure or thrive upon people trying to pull them down because you'll find yourself in a crowd who actually want to turn around and say, oh, you're going to fail at that. And it's like, okay, that makes me more hunger to actually go and like have more success with it. So it's a, it's a mixture of both. And it depends how you use your mindset to actually pull you out of failure to lead to success. So what would, what do you think that anybody that's going through an experience right now and maybe like had just overcome or gone through, maybe not even overcome yet a a failure in their life. And if they're listening right now, what would be the, the steps that you would suggest to them that they can take to really start seeing the failure as an opportunity to learn? The biggest thing what what I did is a learning curve for this. So when I failed to get to London, I sat back and went, do I really want to go another four years of trying to get to an Olympic Games and then fail again? You, You control what you can control now and you leave the uncontrollable out of it. It's about writing down what you've done well over them last few years or the last months that you've been working on it and taking, if the negatives outweigh the positives, 
then you need to sit back and speak to people about it. It's all about asking for help in that moment. I've done it through a phase of having mental health problems, through sport and career, through um, career pathways. It's been a big element of mine where I've asked many people, okay, I need some help on this. And that's what I would say to anyone. And if you don't, you can sit there by yourself and it can crush you, but it can start crushing you and crushing you and crushing you to a point where you find yourself, how do I get out of this? Mm-hmm. Is there a way out? Then you start getting all these negative and doubts that creep in. But when realistically there is help out there, you just need to like speak up. And it. I will tell anyone that to this day to just ask for help. Uh, there's a lot of strength in what you just shared, bro. Um, I think early on in my own journey, uh, really experiencing entrepreneurship, I thought I needed to have it all figured out. And uh, I dated a really powerhouse entrepreneurial woman that I felt I needed to compete against. And so, you know, the listeners that are listening, they probably heard this story before, but in, in, in hindsight, I, I basically realized how much I sabotaged that relationship because I needed to kind of like prove myself. And what I realized is, you know, I actually uh, just needed to prove myself to myself. And like, I could have asked her for help a thousand times, but what I was doing was I was actually competing with her. And so this ended up becoming my snowball effect, as you mentioned so beautifully earlier, right? Because now I felt like I needed to find all the answers by myself. And as a result, I put up this huge wall and I didn't ask anybody for help. And I mean, I found the answer. It just took me to very dark places inside um and i needed well it was beautiful once i found it but like it took a very long a very long period of time to find that like which is amazing i'm not saying it's wrong because it's who i am today but this is the beautiful thing and if i would have asked for help you could have like that that could have become a lot faster of a process you know what I mean? And, I, and th- this, I think that, you know, especially men. Yeah. You know, um, and I think at that time, you know, I was just starting or, or like kind of like halfway or, or, or three quarters through my platinum experience with Tony. Yeah. So I didn't really like have very uh, strong enough. Um, Awareness. It, it wasn't even it wasn't even it was it was well awareness for sure because I would have asked the question yeah. but like the thing is is that it didn't allow me to ask other brothers inside of the platinum world for help I felt like I needed to prove something to them instead of yeah. saying hey guys I need your support so it fucked up because so but then this way this is also the great gift and this is where I want to come back to is it it, it led me to the jungle by myself where I yeah. really connected to my heart and so uh it was beautiful because asking for help absolutely it's the biggest thing really, been- all all we need all all you need to do it's all you yeah. need to do it's this it's the most simple ingredient to implement into a routine or into your your life platform to just say, I need help. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's in your work industry, whether it's your group of people around you, it's having that, even if it's one person, that doesn't matter, that one person is there to help you. And I know obviously like men's mental health and stuff like that. And me last year, I went through the biggest downfall where I never thought there would be a way out. But I, I literally, it took me a few days to realize it. And I turned around and went, yeah, I do need help. And I picked up the phone and I dialed my psychologist and I went, I am in shit. Like, I do not know where to turn. I don't know who to speak to. I feel like I've been on a roundabout with 500 different ro- routes that I can take, but I do not know where I need to go first. And my brain's trying to tell me, you need to go down every single path at once. And that's not what you need to do. 
And it wasn't until I'd done further psychology and learned more about myself. It's like you said, like going into that jungle, you start and realize you bring yourself back to your heart. You connect your mind, your soul all together. And you just start and feel it again. And you're like, why didn't, what what drove, drove me to that? And it's a question that you'll keep going around in your head, but it's not to let it beat you up. You just use it as a sign of, yeah, I, st- I did it, but look where I'm at now. I am a stronger individual, more powerful individual that everyone looks upon and says, well, if he can do it, why can't I do it? And it's that little bit of courage to just go out there. Like I did it with people who I didn't even know, and I found it much better. So it's what works for you. I'm not saying that's going to work like for yourself or other people that's listening today, but it's having that little bit of faith. Take a leap of faith and just go for it and just say, do you know what? Fuck what you say. I need to ask and I need to get the help that I require. I love it, man. It, 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 and I think this is current. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a huge courageous act as well. And then as a result of that courageous act, you start to change, you know, the authentic conversations around you, the vulnerabilities. It, it, it actually opens up a safe space for the, any environment that you walk into. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think the biggest thing that I learned is it it starts to pull people closer to you. The ones who who have your back through thick and thin, it doesn't matter whether you fall out over the silliest things or you just have the stupidest arguments and then think, why do we even have that argument? And you sit and laugh and you go for a drink and you might be like, why the fuck did we have that argument? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> so I sit and think now, yes, like it does pull it, the loved ones, family, friends, you name it, it will pull them much, much closer to you. When I was growing up, um, I would have like that, that whole journey, you know, of going yeah. into the jungle, it was amazing. And most people won't be able to do that. Like, sorry, mo- I believe that most people would not do that journey that I took. And so what I'm trying to say is like, I would have loved to have been educated <laughs> you know, in, in like at a young age in a lot of these things that we're discussing. Why do you think that as we're growing up, like, I don't know, would you, you know, you're, you're about nine years younger than me. So would you, would this have benefited you? Because I know it would have benefited me growing up and being communicated these types of very important concepts that literally we are, when you're listening to those like videos and things like that, people are like, no, that's just like, that's not real or that's not possible. Yeah. And, you know, or like the stuff that we, we, we learn or, you know, from stoicism or different books or even Tony, you know, uh, being in the room with him, right? Like these are the things that empower. So like, why do you feel, or why do you think that it's not more easily accessible in the educational industry? I would love to know personally why it's not taught more. I think it's only been in the last few years with obviously, like, yeah, I'm not saying it's just males. Like, yes, it happens to females as well. But it's about learning. Like for me, I would say 18 to 20, 24, 25-ish, I've probably learned more about myself in the last two years so like 25 26 and 27 there's been a lot more learned about psychology how your mind works I don't know why at a young age that kids like I get kids don't are still developing and I get that but for people that's going through university or starting their own business who's never come across stresses or anything like that that's affecting them I don't know why it's not been taught, taught. And it's not until you go out there, you kind of made to feel like a lone wolf and you've got to survive by yourself. And it's horrible to actually say that, but that's, that's how I've found it. And it hits because it's like, 
that's how I was last year. In such a bad place where I was like, I am by myself, don't know where to turn. You feel like you've just been dropped in the middle of an ocean with a raft, no food, no water, find your own way out, but you haven't got a map and it's like you've got to create your own route. But unless you connect with the right people to get you through that path, it's known who them right people are to speak to. So I would love to see or speak to the people that who who don't want to put this in a curriculum and say, we need to teach everyone about this to show that, yes, you can find yourself in a very, very, very dark space. Because the last thing you want, and as horrible as it is, I've had family who's committed suicide because of it. And it's just, you need people to know it doesn't matter what time of day it is, wherever the hell you are in the world, whatever the time difference is, just pick up the flip and phone and ring us or even drop me a text. I would rather you do that than just sit there and suffer for the last few months and then find out, oh, well, like something bad's really happened. So it's shit, but at the same time, that's what everyone needs to know, that you could be that one person to save that person, to help that person get out of that dark space where they are. So. You talked so beautifully about the mental health component of this. And I think that this touch, this personally touches on, on a, a very soft topic for me because uh, since I was a little boy, my sister who like really took care of me and, you know, I mean, she's, she's my sister, right? Is amazing. Uh, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And the moment that, that, like that diagnosis came through, it's like her identity shifted. She took sure. on that identity. And it, it, I think it's also, bro, what drew, drove me to understand this, like this essence that we all have inside that would drove me inside without, because I, I, I knew that who she was at a core essence and that who she is at a core essence. And yeah. I was, I think, and, and, and actually this is me maybe saying this for the first time ever. Um, I think that I couldn't find the answers outside of me because I had come to believe that people were only coming from a place of their own trauma. So I needed to find that purity so deep inside of myself yeah. to know that there is with absolute certainty, that essence, that 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 power, that core yeah. that we all have and that my sister also has that. And so by me feeling it, you know, like Tony says, a belief is a poor substitute for an experience. That experience gave me such power to yeah. know that there is so much grace. And I think that mo so people, when they go into this mental, you know, identity, mental, uh, you know, health identity crises, um, there is a lot of doctors or diagnoses that are projected onto people without yeah. actually knowing the truth. I'm curious to know your thoughts here. Yeah, I completely agree. And I feel like it's part of, like going back to where, you, where, where we said before about being in that jungle and you bring yourself to connect back to you you feel like you're always connected, but then there's, once you're given like bipolar or ADHD or something like that, you find, like I've seen a lot of people where they disconnect themselves from the body and it's like they, they've become this new identity and that's what they have to take on. And it's like, well, you don't because you're still the same person who you were before. Just because you've been given something different it doesn't mean that you need to change your identity and flip to that person because that's not how it works. It's about managing that. It's like me, if I'd have gone through a phase now where I turn around and said, yeah, I've grown up with my legs, like the guys who go to Afghanistan and fight for us or wherever they're fighting in the war, like Iraq or wherever it may be. Yes, there's guys out there who have all the limbs who could get hit by an IED. And it could be a bomb which changes the life forever. And they put in a position where I am. And you think to yourself, 
they're no different. So why treat them differently? No one deserves to be treated differently because of how they look, how they are. It all that matters is they're like they have a good personality, and everyone's able to make them feel inclusive. As long as you make them feel inclusive within that group, there is no reason to change your identity to make them feel like they have to be something else to fit in. Because it's just wrong, and there's more people that do it, and then they start and form their own little group of this new identity group, and you think, well, you were part of our group. So why, what's made you change? But I think it, if you go through that psychology help of trying to point you in the right direction, it then starts to draw you back. So you start and pull all the pieces back back together and all the strings start to go. And that's where you can start making your ways again. Do you think that when, like when you say, when you, when you say, because there's duality and there's polarity, right? And this is such an important contrast of our life, right? And, and you know, the more that I'm like paying attention to, to this type of context, I'm recognizing that, you know, really right and wrong is completely subjective as well. And it's based off of a person's map of the world and the way the context is actually cultivated. And so then I start to think to myself, I say, wow, is what's right and wrong? And I start to ask myself, you know, well, what's the compass, the internal compass? Yeah. What are the values and the principles that are going to guide me to identify the way that I, I choose to live my life and the way that I choose to live people? And so if I choose to treat every person the way ultimately I would like to be treated, then that becomes the opportunity to recognize that every person is our mirror. Yeah. So my question to you is, during your early years and during the time of you growing up, you know, was there times where people didn't treat you with those level of standards or didn't give that, that, that mirror that you kind of like you uphold in your energy and the way that you speak in the way that you are, are there people that really kind of like didn't show up in that capacity or in that level of integrity or the values that, you know, we're discussing? Absolutely. I mean, just going back to that there, as soon as you said it, I knew straight away where I was going to go with that. For me, when when I first started nursery, um, I was put in from a young age, so I was like three, three year old. I had one friend who knew that I was being singled out and it's good at that young age where kids know you're not felt part to be a group and I wasn't welcomed. I hated going in and never wanted to go in. I always used to make up an excuse like I feel sick or I'm not very well I'd still go in but I felt like majority of days there's like certain flashbacks where I get of being like yeah I was playing with toys by myself and I did have my own company I think it's not until I got to primary school where everyone started to turn around and make made me feel more welcome and started to understand a little bit more about disability not only for the kids around us, but for teachers. And it's important for them to know what your ability is to do certain tasks. Unless you have a conversation with them, then you're not going to be able to understand where they need help or where they need to go. So yeah, through, uh, throughout her life, I've, I've felt numerous times where you feel like you're making yourself be part of that group when realistically they don't want you to be part of their group. And it, it's not a nice feeling to have, but it's part of that where you turn around and go, why am I not being made to feel welcome? Mm. And it's having them values in yourself to say, well, am I doing something wrong? Then the self-doubt start, the negative thoughts start creeping in. And it's not you at all. It, everyone has their own group of what they want to do. So for me, that's why when I started swimming and I started getting all the, like a bit of publicity and stuff and being in the press, everyone was like, oh, we want to be friends with you. And I'm like, well, you didn't want to be friends with me before. So why all of a sudden do you want to now? So then I switched my mindset of going, nah, don't want to be friends with you because it was them type of people who knew. Yeah. yeah. But it's them people 
who you know that can turn around in later life who try and pull you down. So as soon as you start and get into that wrong crowd, you then turn around in whether it's 10 years, 15 years, however long it takes you to realise, shit, why the hell didn't I realise back then that this is what they were trying to do? But that's why I've always done my own route of going, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, that's what I want to do here, this is what I want to achieve by then. It's having them goals in place to, to keep yourself motivated. Even when you haven't got your friends around you at such a young age, you've got them freaking goals to go and hit because you know you want to do well in life. You want to change the way that people look at you and look up to you. Because if you do that, you're going to, people will sharp come back to you before you know it. That's what I've witnessed throughout life. And I think too, there's like, there's a, there's a space there where you, you start to not make it about you anymore right yeah. and you know that you're in service to something so much more bigger and present and it really has zero to do about you and so it doesn't matter if yeah. people like you or don't like you or challenge you or and i and i think that when we really stop caring about what people think yeah we start living in the space of freedom and it gives us, it, it, it allows, like, I think, I think that's like ultimate freedom. When you, when you stop thinking about what anybody thinks or says, yeah, you have ultimate sovereignty because then you're directly connected to yourself, uh, to your creator or, you know, whatever you believe in. And then as a result, you can probably connect a lot easier with people that really are meaningful. Yeah. I think as well, it's recognizing, I didn't recognize this until the last few years that yes, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Their opinion might not suit what your opinion is, but everyone has to say what's on the mind at times. And yes, if you upset someone, don't be scared because it will, it will actually affect someone more than you think. But it's accepting that and saying, well, it's an opinion. It doesn't exactly count. It's what they think. So as soon as you switch your mindset to saying, I wouldn't say it's going like completely ice cold, but it's com trying to make you feel and switch it around to look at it from a different point of view. And this once you start that's looking true. at it, that's what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah. So when, once hearing, you do, like when you're when you're describing it, I'm hearing how you can be more compassionate to another person based off of their their awareness or their map of the world, thinking or feeling or knowing or understanding that they're actually doing the best with the knowledge that they genuinely have in that moment. Correct. But that map of the world, you, you've you got your map, I've got my map, you put another 15 people in the room and you put everyone's map on top of each other, you are not going to be exactly the same on top of one another. Everyone's map from that from number one to number 15 will be completely different. And if you're telling me that it's like for like, bullshit <laughs> I'll be and this, this i think this is this is, and this is why it's so valuable to listen yeah i think this is where people forget how important it is to listen to one another that every you get to learn from each person because each person in that room that 15 people has or yeah. 16 or whatever or 100 or a thousand or a million they all have a different map of the world and by having a different map of the world and recognizing what kind of fits, what doesn't, what resonates, what, what change, what kind of solutions can be created when that type of energy comes together? That's why I, that's why I use the acronym all the time of maps. So throughout life, I've always had a map to get me to my end goal. But yeah. the way that I come up with it is it's all about it's the mindset, your attitude, your positivity and your strength everyone's going to have different elements to do with all four of those and they are not going to match it's like dna no one's going to match dna to someone else in your boundaries yes you might be able to match up like an organ or something like that but dna is really unique to you and that's what makes you different so unless you start to recognize that and accept it that's when you will start and go a long way there's no way all these companies in the world like Apple, Microsoft or 
Airbnb or places like that have done it all by themselves. They've had a team of 15, 20 to 100 people that have put all their thoughts in because it's it's a business. That's how they want to work. And the more ideas that you get, you start and grow. You start and grow together. But that's the only way it's going to work. There is no way on goddamn earth that you can turn around and say, I'm going to build this business from the ground up by myself and know every single book that is on this planet. Because <laughs> it's not possible to do that. You've got to build that team around you to guide you on that path to get you to your end goal. And once you realize that, then that is up to you to take on board and push that further. And then you go and they, that team that you've got build their own team, but they're still with your team. So you're then starting to expand and expand and expand. And that's where the growth starts to impact. And this is where that beauty of like competition or separation breaks down because now that illusion doesn't exist anymore. Correct. It's now actually in co-creation, in partnership, in supporting the collective that we start to actually transform so many greater things as a result because now we're working in multiple different verticals yeah. across different industries with different partnerships because now we're creating an absolute change and that becomes so much more fun because doing it together is really what we're here for. Yes. But the more the more you do it with the people that have the same energy as you, that's going to drive you forward as well. Because you don't want to bring people in that's going to turn around and go, yeah, I'm going to do it. Well, I've been waiting a week, been waiting three weeks, been waiting months now. Whereas like I've got someone that's gone, came to us and they've acted on it and done it. Like when we we had a, obviously we had a meeting yesterday and you were like oh can you do it now and I was like can I come and then we had to attend but I'm like I'll do it tomorrow we'll get shit done it's just about yeah. getting it done and making yeah. sure that you plan your time effectively to do that once you do it that's it you're fine you get stuff done much easier and that's how it how it will impact your life and that time management your communi- communication skills your self motivation your discipline, desire, whatever it is, they all start and fill into this bucket where you go, that's my fucking team and that's who I want to push forward and that's who I want to work with. And you'll see it once you start communicating correctly. And that's the authentic and transparent conversation that so many people struggle with having because they are not allowing themselves to follow what they really want, you know? So I'm curious, like when you, when you, when you create these maps and how you, you know, you really, you know, like support, you know, the way that you're really stepping into and how you're serving, um, what do you feel like is imperative for us? Like, as we continue to bridge together, you know, different environments and communities and, uh, people in terms of, yeah, just changing, I think, you know, uh, our environments for, for a greater calling. Why do you, like, what do you think people need to, how can they apply these maps into maybe their own uncertain environments? Yeah. Like, like you said, mindsets, attitude, positivity, and strength to yeah. really influence their the, like because some people don't have the environments that we live in right like you and I don't like we we're very fortunate you know there but there's some people that maybe they don't necessarily are around those environments so if anybody's listening or like you know like I just would love some sort of a tool that anybody that's listening can take away from this to like really activate themselves knowing that uh, you know that we're here to support them I think one of the biggest things what I used to help me get to a point where I didn't know who was in that circle to help me out is kind of using like a traffic light system. So the green are the people who are the closest to you. 
the amber are the people who are close to you but not extremely close and the red are the people at the top who you know that you can speak to who know a little bit about you and they understand where you're coming from and that's what I started to implement throughout when I was working with what I wanted to achieve in life what I wanted to get out of my sport what my short-term goals were my medium-term and my long-term goals so it might be what you want to achieve in the next six months and it could be saying well do I want to finish a course do I want to get better mindset do I want to put myself in a position of saying I want to speak to a psychologist to develop myself better it's setting yourself them short little tasks and little goals in life to make it much stronger and you might think well I'm not going to achieve anything trust me when you start and write these down on pieces of paper you can think about it in your head but the more you run over it in your head and keep going and keep going and keep going what do you when you start and write it on a piece of paper the next day, how the fuck do you remember what you've done yesterday to say, well, that's the task what I set myself? Is it? Or are you just bullshitting to yourself because that's actually what you what you're convincing yourself that that's what you wanted to do? So the more you start and write these down, you might like I did it for Tokyo when I went to the games in Madeira. I started to write them down on pieces of paper and pin them on my wall or pin them on the back of the door. And I was like, that is my ultimate goal. That is where I want to be. Yes, it's not a like your overall lifetime goal, but it's a goal that you want to achieve in life because that is what you've set yourself out to be. And that's what you want to do. So there's once you start, to, you don't want to go and take jump from zero to a thousand or zero to one million because that's not going to happen in such a short period of time. You need to base it on small steps. And once you start getting them small steps implemented, you'll then jump to the medium steps. And then before you know it, the momentum will slowly shift and push you in that direction to say, I'm on a fucking roll here. And I've got the right people behind us because I know I can speak to them. So the more you... Repetition is also key with this. You can't just turn around in a week and say, nothing's working because that's impossible. It takes about 30 days to get into a, a good routine of doing stuff and repeating it day after day after day. So that's that's the biggest thing what I will tell anyone to try and do. And even if you wanted some help to try and run through it, whether it's like dropping like myself a message on social or wherever it is. How can people connect, you know that you, connect with you? How can people connect with you if anybody wants to reach out to you directly? No, so you can connect with me on Instagram, um, Twitter. Well, X, better not call it Twitter now. <laughs> um, I'm on Facebook. Um, and I've also got my own website, but everything's all under my name. So it's all under Lyndon Longhorn. Um, so anything that you need. Gladly. What's the website's domain, like URL, lindenlonghorn.com? Yeah. Okay. So it's lindenlonghorn.com, where I do blog posts and obviously my socials are on there as well. So if you want to hit me up, have a chat about anything, then obviously I'm more than welcome to sort something out and try and point you in the right direction. Amazing. And so uh, what's next for Lynn? Um, so we've got an event coming up in Bali with Chris, uh, Victoria, and a couple of guys who do marketing as well. It's going to be absolutely insane. Um, Chris is obviously real estate. So he's grew his business from going from a million to like a hundred and odd million. So <laughs> it's crazy how he's done it, but he is one of the best people, so friendly, down to earth, kind, caring, will literally do anything for you if you put the work in as well. Um, you've got then Victoria, who does uh, social media. Um, she's a massive advocate, massive guru, knows everything in and out and can help you on that space. And if you need any marketing help, uh, Maru and Roberto are absolutely phenomenal guys who will point you in the right direction with regards to marketing. So, Obviously, it would be great if anyone could jump out there and get into get involved because you will have one amazing experience. You'll get to meet us as well. So we'll be there. What dates are they and where can they find more information or reach out to somebody? So we have just set up the company. So it's called Idealism Global. So we've got the Instagram, which is currently set up, Facebook page and Twitter. The website's currently getting built at the minute. 
Um, and we should have a landing page up and running, which will be ideal, idealismglobal.com. So keep your eyes peeled because they will be available shortly. And any other information, you are more than welcome to either drop myself or Chris White a message and we can help you wherever we can. Cool. And I'll make sure to drop those links too in the show notes for anybody that's listening live. Um, please go check it out now. Uh, you know, Chris White or Lyndon Longhorn, but like, if you guys need any information from me directly, also let me like uh, guide you guys to, towards them. Um, and for those that are watching the recording back, um, please check out the show notes, go check out Lyndon uh, and check out I Idealism Global as well, because they'll be cultivating a lot of different events around the world over the next months, years, decades. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's a new organization. However, it is actually a lot of people that have been doing it for a very long period of time. So it's really coming together of, of a group of individuals that are doing some really profound things in the, in the planet and they'll be integrating a lot of great events. So make sure to check them out uh, and uh, looking forward to expanding and growing and seeing where you guys take it. It's really exciting to be part uh, of this journey, observing you guys and, and seeing, I'm always here to support and just, uh, just grateful for you, brother. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure. And I have last one last question, uh, if you have, yeah three days left to live, what would you do? Oh, wow. Now you're asking. <laughs> um, three days left to live. So my main one would be to do a skydive. I'd love to do that just for the adrenaline rush. Um, I would jump, probably jump on a plane and do a bit of traveling for a day. Probably somewhere in Europe. Third, probably go around a race track. So I would literally go around, like get a racing car or some supercars, hypercars, and just do a track day, but get a group of people together and have a bit of a race and a bit of competition. So yeah, I think it would be amazing. Love it, bro. Amazing, man. Thank you, Thank you so much, bro. Anything else that you want to share? Any insights? And uh, no, I obviously just keep believing and keep achieving, as I will say. <laughs> Big love, bro. Hey, everyone, and thank you so much for listening to The Resilient Minds. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please make sure to go comment and like and follow us on iTunes or Spotify. And make sure, please make sure that if you really love this, to share this episode and make sure that you're inviting all your friends to like it as we continue to unfold what the beauty of our minds does more importantly how powerful our heart level of intelligence can be when we combine our heart and our brain together and more importantly make sure you take the time to take a look at what we're doing at balanced media ventures and how we can actually really support you in doubling your impact your income and your influence and how you can bring your life's greatest vision into your purpose and create it from that level of reality. Talk to you soon.